Okay, time for an unboxing. Sorry for the mess. <laughs> Just wanted to get this on here and do this. Um, we'll see what we got. Well, I think judging by the title of this video, which it, uh, I will surely put, um, it won't be hard to guess exactly what's in this. Um, so I got to dust off some stuff here. <laughs> Anyways, let's get to it. So I've been waiting to get this watch for some time as soon as it was announced uh gosh it's been already a month at least um i feel it has been probably even more than that uh, i've just been waiting to to try to sell some stuff and um you know try to keep my collection low and to stuff that i really really you know feel like i want to be core in my collection and i will wear and i don't want to have to keep too many things in the boxes and you know, I want to keep the rotation short and small and uh, enjoy the watches right and so this is one that I've wanted for since I saw it so this is the well, let's go into it this is the first unboxing hopefully nothing important private shows up this seems to be a similar box to the Zen 103 classic 12 that I used to own this should be the warranty in here so I'm going to cover for any information well actually there is no information <laughs> uh, this was bought directly from revolution there's a stamp here and it's funny they didn't even bother signing all this but anyways there we go that's revolution 2 because they had one before this is the bright star and the pre previous one was the dark star um, different handsets that was one thing I do believe it's still had a black star, but this one is actually black loom, so it should glow. The previous one, I don't believe, did. So I guess that's why it's a dark star in that sense, even though this does look dark in the daytime. Right. Um, let me see if we can zoom in there a little bit. Come on. Yeah, so there's that. And also that one has, it wasn't fully tegumented and... Uh, I don't think it was tension at all, as far as I'm aware of. It had like Fotina. Again, the hands were different. Almost everything else is the same in the hats. But then the, the case and probably the pushers were also stainless steel. It wasn't all blacked out like this. Uh, I don't know what strap option came on. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, I would think maybe a bun, but <clears throat> perhaps not. I'd have to look it up again. And I wish I had known about that, and I and I when I found out about it, it was way too late. And I was like, oh, that would have been cool because I really like the, like the Hoyer Buns, Bunswer, Bundeswehr. That's how you pronounce it. Forgive my uh, poor German, but um, <clears throat> you know what I'm talking about. Um, it's a really cool watch. I have it. I don't have that book with me. I think it's, it's under. <laughs> It's buried somewhere. My uh, watch, the book that I have that has a lot of historical like um, models. But anyways, um, yeah. And I did own like a nice, I guess, copy or replica or homage of that from HK Ed. Um, it was exactly in the configuration that I wanted. Uh, black bezel. You could could have gotten it in silver too. There's he actually offered a lot of different variations: panda, blue dial, but I wanted just a classic black and white scheme with a silver uh, case and stuff and it was pretty good uh, ran on a st1901 seagull of course uh, mechanical hand wound movement uh, con wheel people in the watch base should know that movement very well uh, and was really pretty good nice well made and you got the option to do like a a, a solid or a, a exhibition case back um it came with both so i did definitely use the exhibition case back because the seagull movement is actually kind of cool looking um so anyways but the bezel was way too like loose for me um this doesn't have enough tension he used to, i believe he used to have a, a bi-directional clicking one like in his earlier iteration of that uh bundeswehr uh bundeswehr <sighs> i can't pronounce it right but um, then later on, that last uh, iteration that he had and sold, uh, he took that away, I think, and he just went with the friction, which I think originally these were. Um, 
but I felt it too loose and that really bugged me. I mean, even a long sleeve t-shirt, um, that could actually still move it. It was that, you know, unsecure to me. So that, I mean, probably I should have taken the bezel off and maybe replaced the gasket or whatever, make it thicker, slightly thicker one. So it's a little bit more tight somehow, but I ended up selling it. But it was a pretty good price for, I think around $500 more or less. Let's take a look in here. 300 or 300. I don't know if that's actually mine. It's just funny. They don't even mark the one that I have here. Do they? Uh, you know what? It might be one of us on this stamp, but we shall see in a moment. Which one is this? And I'm sure this is more marketing jargon. And so yeah, the it should look like this, of course, once you uh, loom it up and uh, whatever. I'm pretty sure I don't have the last one. That would be cool. Uh, they are limited to 300, which is a pretty low number. I think some of the other limited editions from Zinn has been like maybe five or 600. Uh, it depends on the model. Um, winding the watch. Zoot. I should have a, then if it's position zero, if that's for winding, then this probably has a screw down crown, unless they're just showing that this is uh, not even, maybe that is the, the regular position. I guess we'll find out soon. And it should come with two straps, the black leather uh, bun strap. Very cool. I'm not really a bun strap person, but for this, this definitely works with it. And if any watch, <laughs> if you're going to wear a bun strap, it should be like a watch that really supports it. And I think this is one of them. And it comes with like this uh, NATO style, or is it Zulu style, whatever, uh, nylon fabric strap as well, which is cool. And 20 millimeters should be good to uh, be able to uh, fit a lot of strap options, which I do have. So let's get to the watch. Sorry, went on for about seven minutes on that. I guess this is the easiest way to take it out. Put this aside. Make sure there's nothing sensitive in there. Okay. And here we go. And they shipped this fast. This was like, um, I ordered it Monday, like after, in the afternoon, sometime on my lunch break, I think. <laughs> Been thinking about all day and I was like, okay, I'm just going to do it. And then it came today, Wednesday. So basically overnight it. Um, strap changing tool, which is typical, but this should be like a pin or a screwdriver. Screwdriver. And I wonder what the other end is. It could be a pin. Yeah. Um, you can use that to push out. It should have drill lug holes, if I'm not mistaken. But anyways, extra spring bars. Is this thing signed? Not really. Truth be told, I'm not a fan of this style of NATO strap. Um, these like big, are these, I thought of calling these D rings, but they are a little bit much. I mean, I guess for this thickness and stuff, if you tie it through, it'll be okay. But a lot of times I often find that there's like so much height to them that like they kind of sit off of the strap a bit. And so you either have to shift them one direction or maybe the other to try to get them as flat as possible, if you know what I mean. But we shall see you later how that turns out. Um, but you know, I'll, I'll wear it. But then again, I will, uh, at least on the first try, I always try to wear it on the original strap before I start changing them up. Um, but if I really want to get into this, I probably will uh, start to do it um, on this strap first because if i'm taking it to work um i guess i will not i don't do leather it's because i get hot and sweaty at work and i wouldn't i don't want to mess up the leather number one secondly i always clean my watches after work too so it requires a little bit of a rinse down maybe a little bit of light smile soap uh, just to make sure it's clean when before i and i clean myself off take a shower once i get back can be kind of dirty at work and uh yeah that's what i do that's my routine and 
I guess this should be number 70 of 30. Cool. I guess this was in their first 150 batch release, if I'm not mistaken. Because they, if I recall, they said that they were going to release the first uh, batch, um, about the first 150 for pre-orders or whatever, I think. And then uh, after that... Um, like later, like about a month or so later, then the rest of the remaining 150 will be, you know, uh, be able to be released. If I guess the first 150 haven't already sold out, or if they have, that is, or if they haven't. Anyways, sorry if I'm a little bit jumbled up in my speech because I've had a long day. I made sure I had enough time to try to rush out and grab this from my P.O. box <laughs> and then, um, get back to work and not lose too many time, make sure I clock out on time. And yeah, nice, very nice. Let's get a closer look. And smooth action, is this captive bezel? Yes, um, it has the screws. So I'm imagining if I find it too loose, correct me if I'm wrong, you should be able to tighten these up a little bit. And it should be about three of them, I think one, two, three uh, and get a little bit more tense uh, tighter but I don't think this should be a problem we shall see it comes down to uh, actually putting it on the wrist so let's see interesting way to holding it in I guess so then they don't mess up the strap you know putting it through the, uh, the actual holes and and causing a crease and stretch unnecessarily but before you've actually worn it. How the heck do you get this off? Oh, I think I gotta pop this off and then, there we go. Knock underneath that. And just to confirm, let's pull this out here. Yep, number 70 of 300. Should be fully tangemented all the way around. And it says black, Hard coated. They say they use PVD. I'm not sure why. Isn't DLC supposed to be that? As far as I understand, there's a difference between DLC and PVD. And most people seem to say that DVD, uh, DVD, DLC is uh, uh, more durable, uh, more resilient than PVD, um, more scratch resistant, and all that. So that's why I always find it funny, even on my other Zen that's all blacked out and Tejament, uh, the U50 SBS that I have, um, they supposedly also use PVD. And I think in the literature, why they use that is that the reason why PVD doesn't work or uh, and doesn't last as long as uh, it should is that the material that it is applied over generally isn't as resilient as the PVD. So if it's a softer base, then I guess it doesn't have a good foundation for that uh, coating. So then if you take a scratch or impact, it can, you know, the uh, the stuff that underneath it is, doesn't hold up behind it. So then it, it can kind of crack or, you know, chip or scratch off whatever, or just wear out more uh, under, you know, regular usage because of that. I think that's their explanation of it. But uh, sorry about this, must be street cleaning. Um, but whatever, so it's good, you can wear it on this. And I like that the, the bun strap is not too wide. I don't like it when this, the, the, you know, this padding part that's in between your wrist and the watch, this right, um, it's a little too wide, like you see like, extra of it like on the outside, that's like too much, it should just fit the uh, silhouette of the watch, right? And let's give it a wind. Yep, it's not screwed down. I don't think I thought it really was. It's 100 meters water resistant. This should be using like the Salida SW510B. I don't think it's the MB. If it's the MB, that would be the manual wind version. And there she goes. And see. That's, is that a middle position? This shouldn't be, because there is no date on this. I thought someone said that they felt that there was maybe a, 
a position in the middle. Sorry if I off center that shot there. I'm just looking around the camera. And yeah, nice. So we'll try this wash jack. It is glycine. Sub combat sub 39 blue. Great watch for the price. Um yeah, they really like this. And it's running really, really good. Especially after I regulated it. It's like barely a second and uh even my tutor black bay didn't do that well out of the box anyways let's see how this looks like on my 6.9 inch wrist and this leather feels pretty nice it doesn't feel too stiff actually you know you already got a couple of layers of uh, leather right because it's a bun strap and I think I can go one more like that. I gotta take all this, this last bit of tag here. But let's move this down. Maybe I can slip it through right here. Well, I'm definitely not returning this now, right? <laughs> There we go. And this should wear large, you know. This is the original size at 43 millimeters. And uh, yeah, I mean, it should be nice, large, legible tool watch. And for me, you know, 43 is like the maximum for a normal case size, I would say. Um, Difference might be, exceptions might be like uh, Seiko Tuna, for example. It's 47 millimeters at least, but it's got no lugs and it actually wears uh, remarkably smaller than you think it would for such a size, uh, you know, uh, watch. But yeah, I like it. It looks pretty mean and badass. Yeah, this won't take too long to break in, but it's already comfortable right out. It's not too overly thick. I think it's just enough. Um, I keep trying to shoot it down this angle here. Something like this you'd wear. It's a little bit higher up anyways, for me at least. I think that's about the right position. I like it, but I'll probably put it on that guy and maybe give this a whirl tomorrow at work and see how it's doing performing um gotta know oh let me do one more thing before i close this out and yeah i do long unboxing videos and i don't care because i just do what i do in my videos it's not a profession and i'm not looking for well, I am looking for um, to get some subscriptions, but you know it's mostly for a hobby. And if I get the subscriptions and you know the additional measly payoff that YouTube does, um, all the better. You know, this, everything helps, right? Let me show you how this looks like next to a uh, Zen U50, just for comparison. Hang on. Okay, again, Zen U50 SBS and. This is 30, this is, should be 41 millimeters, but I believe that's at the bezel. The case itself actually might be a little bit smaller, like 40 or even possibly a 39. That's definitely pretty darn good for a 500 meter water resistant watch. And there is a size difference, but that's to be expected. This is, should be about two millimeters larger, but this bezel is smaller compared to this, and definitely the dial is smaller as well, comparatively. But, I don't know what you, but Zins are cool, but I think there might be, they might be even more badass when they're all blacked out. <laughs> Anyways, uh, this game long enough, let's just close out with a quick kind of loom shot here. Close the show. Hopefully get this dark enough it may not be 
And where's my black light? And the star does glow. It's just obviously black loom is like kind of a joke. But you know, it's cool. I dig it. I'll take it. Yeah. And see this thing run. Nice. There you go. Thanks for watching and uh, enjoy your watches. I'm pretty sure I will be enjoying this one for the next few days.